Hello, hello, and welcome to Hero Infinite with Ryan. Say hello, Ryan. Hello, it is me, Ryan. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you guys. Uh, Hero Infinite is a project I've been working on for a little while. It is a... We've shown my tabletop system I've been making, Heart of Action, two times on channel. Both times, I'd say, were not the best show-off of the system yet. <laughs> And I hope this is going to be different. Oh, hang on, hang on. Boom, title card. Yeah. Uh, so... Oh, title card. Uh, those of you watching on YouTube, this is basically going to be a glorified podcast. There's going to be very little visuals aside from uh, this bar, which I'll explain later. Hang on, I'm actually going to... Yeah. That, that's the only thing that is going to like have any importance... To, uh, to be able to see. But, anyway, um... Hang on. I'm just, I'm just filling in a thing real quick. No, do, no, do you, bro, do you? Okay. Um... Oh god, I gotta actually DM again. <laughs> okay. So here at Infinite, uh, every single session of this we have will have different players present, but they're all going to be in one consistent world, a superhero world. And we're starting here with Ryan, which... Do you just want to go ahead and read the character introduction you wrote up? Just like that? Yeah, yeah. Right. The, use that has the lead-in. Alright, guys. Get ready to meet this character and learn about his backstory. Now, let's start off with it. Ace D'Angelo was born in a poor household of five people. Both of his parents were working multiple jobs just to provide a sustainable income for his family. While Ace, being the oldest child, had to make sure that everyone else was happy. At the age of 16, he decided to drop out of high school so he can learn how to cook, clean, and take care of two other people because his parents were making sure they weren't out on the streets, so he had to grow up fast. Ace made sure that his younger siblings were always happy, and that his mom and dad were still keeping track of themselves because of how hard they were working. But all of that came to a sudden stop when a group of people he didn't know were ransacking his house. He told his siblings to hide in the closet, as he kept a keen eye on them to get an idea of what they were after. Amanda looked as though he came out of that Godfather movie he watched with his mom and dad when he was young was commanding the thugs to grab all of their money. Ace was furious. Everything that his parents were working hard for was gone in an instant. They left as Ace felt hollow. He went to go check what was left. Absolutely broken. The living room was, a, the living room was as though two pro wrestlers got in a bad fight and wrecked everything. There wasn't anything to salvage besides the broken couch which was still there. His heart sank when he heard his parents arrived at a broken house. They were absolutely distraught as their eyes wandered around the house before landing on Ace. They knew he didn't do anything, not that he couldn't do anything in the first place. Their footsteps shook Ace to his core. He didn't know what was coming, other than it wouldn't be a pleasant experience. He prepared for the worst when he felt both his parents hug him for the first time in how long. Their tears crashed down on his head before he too started to cry. His brave act in front of his siblings was gone as he let the waterworks run. He didn't know how long they all cried. He only knew he stopped when his parents went limp and fell to the floor. Now let me, let me say this right now. This is a hard to pronounce word. Just letting you know. Takosubo cardiomyopathy, the doctors called it. Or in layman's terms, broken heart syndrome. He had no clue of the scientific parts the doctor said, other than it entailing that his parents were filled with so much anguish that their hearts started to shut down. He went back home to check in on his siblings when he saw a familiar-looking man get into a car and start to drive away. He caught a glimpse of the license plate and came up with a brilliant idea. 
He rummaged through his old dad, through his dad's old clothes, and found something from his homecoming that reminded him of the man that stole from his place last night. He grabbed a small screwdriver before he told his brother and sister that he was going to hang out with his friends, when in reality, he was going to find the man that signed his sentence when he messed with Ace. He found a rundown looking factory and a half a dozen men walking around as though they were having a get together. He heard a car coming nearby before he ducked into a nearby bush. When the car finally stopped in front of the building, he saw the same man from the night before walk into the building with his goons carrying multiple briefcases in each hand. A faint smile creeped to his lips as he knew what he was going to do next. A brief click could be heard as he took a picture of the man walking towards the building with the sucks. He quickly dialed 911 and told them what was going on before seeing an opportunity to get closer to the building and hear what was going on. He sent the picture of the man and hung up on them before starting to sprint towards the car before he grabbed a screwdriver and began to pop all the tires in case they were able to skitter away. He heard someone coming before he scampered off towards the back of the building. He hid behind a nearby dumpster before opening it. His plan would work if that dumpster wasn't closed, so he stuck a screwdriver to the dumpster in such a way that it wouldn't be able to close without the assistance of a hammer or power tool. When he finished, he promptly entered the building similar to a ghost. Ace knew what he was getting into when he saw those men enter the building, but he knew that he had to do something. So he started to search for the man that wronged him in the first place. This was his first time doing something like this, and he was having a blast. Nobody even knew what was going on before he found himself in front of a man three times bigger than him with an angered expression. Ace's face had a gleeful look upon inspection but he was almost certain he would be killed if he didn't attempt what he figured would be the best way to con this man. He gave a small chuckle before the man demanded what he was doing here, before Ace responded in kind. Hey now, I'm certain you'll be dumped in a river you attempt that. After all, I am one of the children of the fathers. He chirped with a hint of animosity. The giant froze in terror before he prostrated himself and promptly apologized. His gamble worked as he gave a soft chuckle, soft chuckle, that he, saying that before saying that he doesn't need to prostrate himself and promptly asked where his father was at again. The giant, prompt, the giant responded promptly before he questioned how he didn't know where they were again, to which Ace responded, This place is big, and I just wanted to have fun. Ace didn't even knew that they were called the fathers before entering. He just figured that they were called something mundane before he found himself in front of the fathers. He tipped his trilby and leaned forward a bit so the fathers wouldn't see his face. Ten of them were at a table, with a bundle of briefcases in the middle of the table. Before any of the fathers could react, they heard gunfire nearby and turned in the direction of the firefight. Ace quickly grabbed as many briefcases as he could carry before they even knew he was gone. He heard footsteps behind him and knew his life could end at any moment, but he was thrilled beyond relief. He heard people commanding other people downstairs before he did his boldest move in his mission thus far. Jumping out of a three-story window in an attempt to escape. The contents of the dumpster were soft enough to soften his fall, but still firm enough so he could get a proper footing to get out and run away into the night. He kept running until he found himself in an alleyway that was seemingly hidden from the rest of the world. His heart still pumping from his most daring move ever since he dropped out of high school. He caught his breath before his eyes laid upon five briefcases full of something. Their briefcases were simple, as if they weren't expecting anything to happen tonight. He didn't need a key or some kind of combination like he thought he needed. He clicked open the first, the first briefcase to find it full of money. Enough to pay for the bills and then some. He was ecstatic, but had no energy to express his joy before he went to the next briefcase. The house bills were paid, and his parents were out of the hospital thanks to their mysterious funding from Anonymous provided. He laid on the couch as he stopped watching his movie to check in on the news. The reporter was stating that ten infa infamous Mafia godfathers and a half a dozen men were captured 
thanks to an anonymous tip from a possible inside man. He smiled to himself before he heard a car honking outside. He glanced outside his fancy curtains to see a cab driver outside. He gave one last heartfelt goodbye to his parents and gave the biggest bear hug to his siblings before grabbing his bangs and walking off towards the cab driver. That was four years ago. Ace now sits in a relatively cozy apartment five states away from his family and channel surfing through his TV as he was going through another lollipop. The reporter was reading the usual before something caught his attention. A family that was robbed by the now infamous mafia group. Ace gave a small, Ace gave a soft smile as he hurriedly put on his striped button-up and black Womo vest before putting on his striped trilby and walked out of the apartment with him attempting to put on his red tie. All right, and that's that's the introduction of Ace D'Angelo, the first hero of Hero Infinite. Uh, real quick, I'm going to give you 15 hero points for that. Oh, that's really... Um, that's a lot of hero points. Ye. <coughs> it's a nice, long, well-written intro. Um, yeah, thanks, man. If anybody you want watching wants to know the general rules on the Discord server, links all over the place, whether on YouTube or Twitch, or even if you're watching this on Tumblr, you'll find links on all of those if, to the Discord server if you just poke around enough. Uh, we're using my system, Heart of Action 2022 edition, with some minor modifiers for the hero setting. <clears throat> Word. Now, the first of those modifiers, I actually have yet to fully clarify uh, to Ryan here, and I'll mention that now. And it is this bar right here. Yes. Uh, so, different um, settings might change how combat or skill checks work ever so slightly from setting to setting to fit a certain theme. Uh, are these backstories going to be readable later? Um... I have made a Hero Infinite chat on the Discord server. Ryan, if you want to, you can post your back, uh, a text document of your backstory there. But that's oh, yes. your call. I am going to do it. Yeah, alright, so yeah, After. go to the Discord server and uh, later today or within the next couple days, there'll be a fully readable version of that backstory. I'm going to do it right now, in fact. And I'm, uh, is it okay if when I make the YouTube video version of this that I put it in the description below? Ah, oh, yes, go ahead. Where right, yeah, should I so, put it? In stories? Uh, in, uh, on the Gas Network server. Are you part of the Gas Network server? Yeah, you are. The I, Gas uh, Network yeah. server, there's a Hero Infinite category that uh, viewers can should be able to access. Right now, all oh, that's I, there is the title card. That is unfortunate, as I, cannot, as I can't verify my identity by phone. Oh, no. Uh, if you send <laughs> it to me, I'll post it. <laughs> uh, sorry, gamers. Yeah. Uh, here's the document. Okay. The page has, uh, or, yeah, the Discord server has, like, multiple levels of authentication just to stop, like, spam bots and shit, because the link is floating all over the internet right now. So mm. it's really easy to find the server and so if you're looking for it and you're a scammer. There we go. His backstory's been posted in the Discord server to be read. Radical. But yeah, this bar is going to be the, the primary mechanic of the hero setting. I've been testing it a lot with people like my brother. Uh, it is the fucking... Excuse me, it's the, ch the, the challenge bar. I'll explain it better when the first skill check comes along, but this is what we're using in place of things like a health bar. Okay. Um... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and hide that right now. Uh, so. As was mentioned, Ace D'Angelo has moved several states away. Suspifically, the setting is... Uh, I've been... At the time, I believe that story was written, the exact details of the setting weren't ironed down. Uh, the mm. setting uh, is Discordant City. A fictional city in southern Maine on the co east coast. Like, it's a coastal city. Okay. Uh, not okay, too far, okay. like, not too far from Salem, necessarily. Salem is in Massachusetts, but, like, like for context, like, it's, like, the, like right at the edge of Maine is where Discordant City sits. So, like, right near New Hampshire and Maine area. 
um, Discordant City itself being, like, a, a city on par with, like, Boston or New York. A not, like, a nice large city rich with history. And rich with crime! <laughs> um, and Ace D'Angelo had just seen news reports about, you know, crime families in the area. So, it's safe- so... To clarify, your character is basically spending their days, like, bringing down criminal organizations, right? Exactly. Moving exactly. from city to city. Uh, yes, and he's wandering... Yeah, wandering... Peacemaker. Yeah, peacemaker. Um, so as we open up... Hang on. Just moving one of my sound blockers a little bit. As we open up your, um... Like, you've been in, like, you're a recent arrival to Discordant City and have been getting an idea of the crime lords. Mm. Crime lords in your area want to meet you. <laughs> Jeez. <coughs> um, actually, hang on, real quick. Let me post a quick link to the Discord server just for people watching right now. Uh, ba bum. Da ba dum. Okay, here's a link that will never expire. If you, if you're watching the YouTube upload of this, you can use that link to join the Discord server right now if you type it in manually. It'd probably be much easier though to just click the link in the description below. Um, hey, it'd be cool if you guys typed it out. Though. That'd be really cool. Yeah. If if you type it out to join the server, say so once you're in the server. Say I manually typed the Discord link. And and we'll give you moderator. <laughs> mm -mm. That'd be so cool. No, he won't give you moderator rights. We've actually got a fuck ton of moderators just because, like, every one of my friends has been turned into a moderator. <laughs> Any one of my friends that join the server becomes a moderator the moment they join. Um. But yeah, so you're... You've only recently arrived within Discordant City and you've you've been trying to gather some intel on the... The crime families, I'm assuming, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of an intuition check to see how much data you would have got gathered. Do you have uh, any special abilities that would boost that? Uh, like a fox. Would that be? Would, yeah, would that you're. You're. Do you want to read that out so people uh, know? The hero is very charming and quick-witted. Often able to talk their way around for others. Getting a plus 2D, I don't know what that means, for charming and other such challenges. that work? E. Uh, plus 2D is because uh, er the only D used in the system is a D10. Ah. Um, okay, okay. I don't think that one would work, but don't you have another one of, like, knowledge of crime families? Because quick wind uh, is more so, like, on one-on-one -on -one interaction tests. Would street smart work? Yeah, that's another. That also gives two D though, correct? Uh, no, it's just uh, it, it doesn't give two D. Oh, how uh, does it? Hold the hero. Oh, I gotta look at your character. I know I'm the one that typed all this up originally. The hero knows tools of a criminal. Oh yeah, no, that one's the one that gives you, car blanche on like you know how to pick locks, how to hotwire cars, like skills that other people might not automatically know. You automatically know. Okay. So, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you halfway with your quick-witted, and it'll you'll get plus 1D rather than the plus 2 you get from quick-witted normally. That sound fair? Gotcha. It's perfectly right. fine with me. Um, and generally, I'll let you know when I'm doing a skill check, and if you want to spend hero points, you have to let me know as I'm making the roll before I tell you the results. Okay. Which, a whole breakdown of hero points is in the rulebook on the Discord server for those listening. I'll um, hold on to my hero points yeah. for now. The only ones you're allowed- or only things you're allowed to do post-roll are the, um, ignore a dice break purchase, and gain an extra success purchase, and the re-roll an action purchase. Mm. Which, here, I'm just gonna post in the Discord chat a little screenshot of, um, all of the things that you can do with your hero points so that you have it on a quick ha on hand quickly. There you go. Okay. That's everything that you can do. So, 
The top two you have to say you have to declare before I roll or before I tell you the results of the roll. The lower two you can declare afterward. Okay. Gotcha. Um Understanding the rules is important to following the RP. Uh, not necessary. It'll definitely make the elements of the like listening to the the stuff easier. But I I'm going to hope that it doesn't make it essential to follow what's happening because I'm gonna generally just describe how good or bad he did after rolls. Which speaking of which, you got five successes, which mm. is enough to equate to a, a hard level check. So. Within your short time in the city, you very quickly got a good grasp of the criminal families active within the city. Which, there's a small handful of them. You know, a number of small petty criminal groups that, like, any city would have. But, in terms of major fa criminal, fa uh, criminal families, there's only a couple. The one, mm. though, that you've placed your attention on to is, um... The... Uh, what has been known as the Howards family. Uh, or at least that's sort of the name people have given it because it was, you know, it was a cri the head of the crime organization is uh, Tobias Howard. Is the head of, like, the, the lo the, this crime family that you've gotten your attention on. They spend most of their time quietly smuggling things in and out of Discordant City via a Coca-Cola bottling plant and shipping facility that they've gotten their feet their fingers into. Or oh, actually, hang on, no, I can't use copyrighted names. Uh, what's a, what's a knockoff of Coca-Cola that we can have for the Hero Infinite setting? Let like in the, Poca, like Poca Pola. Poca Pola. Poca Pola. Po Polar Cola. It's polar, polar cola. It's got a blue label and it shows a polar bear drinking the uh, drinking the bottle. That's a that's a little mascot. Okay. Da, da, co no, no copyright infringement intended. It's an OC. You can't you can't blame us. You can't blame us. Sorry, I'm I'm drinking a terrible tasting energy drink on the side, and I I might be a little burpy at times. Is it Polar Polo's uh, energy drink brand? Yes, it's it, it's Polar Cola po Polar, Polar Cola, Cola Energy. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking. Um, and for a home, we haven't discussed like a lot of the the details of your living situation, but like you're regularly stealing money from the criminal organizations you conquer, correct? Exactly. But a majority of that goes to like helping those in need, right? Mm. Like, the leftover money he gets yeah. usually gives to you know, the charities or like local events. Other than that, like, you live. I imagine you live similar to Kevin McAllister in Home Alone too, where you just like rent out top star <laughs> hotels, wear nice suits, and like live like that for the most part. Exactly what he does. Yeah. So like right now you're in like a top, a nice top quality hotel overlooking the coasts of Discordant City. As you had like. Just... Waiting for his next victim. Yeah. Um. What I love is your backstory basically in and of itself could have been a whole session. <laughs> but like if <laughs> Wait, we had you. actually properly played out roles and skill checks as part of that. But um. Wait, thank you. Thank it's you. a very good backstory. I love it when players put that much effort into their things. That's hence the 15 hero points. Anyway. Mm. We've been doing so much like talking of nothing actually happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Hang on, I'm about to adjust my mic stand So people might hear a squeak Whoa, big squeak Yeah Um So Uh, you, like I said, you've gathered the uh, Tobias Howard's uh, Crime family You've gathered mm. a bunch of intel on them You know that they're primarily based out of The Polar Kohler bottling plant Which mm. The hotel you have taken, you have picked, conveniently overlooks. Hmm. So I imagine I see them like just run in and out of their points, right? Yeah, you've been you've been like scoping the place out for a little while, and um, hang on, I'm gonna quickly. So, here's what I'm gonna do real fast. 
uh, if people are looking at the stream, but, 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 I'm gonna bring up my art program to just draw a really shitty quick sketch, hold on, of, like, the general area. See, for once, oh, yes, there are some visuals. Oh, visuals, I was gonna for say. For once, in episode one. Like, the basic situation is, like, hang on, you got... Coastline that you're sitting on, you know, with like. Nice waves, bro. Like, roads that run through it. Like, oh my god, my scroll wheel's funky. <laughs> uh -oh. Like, you know, a road that runs along the coast for the most part, with like there being like piers and shit going out. I'm not I, I'm not drawing the most detailed, most scene accurate map. I'm drawing a map that will give you an idea of what's going on. You know what I mean? This is this is just a visual. It doesn't look like this, guys, I swear. You know. The little fucking hot, like like gridlock road situation going on. Again, just giving a general idea. It's like your hotel that you stay in is in, like, this area, and their warehouse sits over What's here. With fucking, like, docks that go out for, the, like, co for cola and smuggled goods to get in and out. Okay. <laughs> it looks like a- I love that in chat arm. It looks like a steak. Guess it fits, because it's a steak out. But um, tss. He doesn't eat steak. It's too fancy for him. <laughs> it's bad for my heart. I just eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Come on. Hmm. Uh, penis butter and jelly. <laughs> what? Is that? Peanut butter. Hmm. Penis butter and jelly. Uh, a delicious meal for every young man living on the streets. But yeah, you've been staking out the warehouse for a few days. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that ugly map. Um. Actually, no, I, there was another reason, thing I wanted to draw. But yeah, you're, like, positioned generally like that, and now I'm just gonna delete everything I just drew. The general warehouse layout it go, is a little something like this, where... Because, like, you have been trying to get... Uh, you rolled a level 5, so I'm gonna give you, like, a full general layout of the area. You know? Because mm. like, okay. your character gained lots of intel, like, before session began. Mm, mm. So, if the the piers are up in this direction, right? Yes. Just up here, like, oops. Hang on, no, fuck. Eh. Hang on. Like, up here is where the piers are. The warehouse is down this way, with big shipping floor here, where, like, shipping crates and stuff are moved around in and out. With, I wish I wish my scroll wheel was a little better. <laughs> With a hall that wraps around the side of it like that, a entrance area here, which is basically like you know a lobby situation. Bathrooms here. Um, side room for staff along like this is like. Hang on. Two different locker rooms for men and female staff. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And over here is... More bathrooms right here. And yeah, offices over here. And let me just do this to mark off doors. Boop, boop, boop. How many bathrooms here? Well, these bathrooms here are the visitor bathrooms, and these bathrooms over here are, like, the staff bathrooms, you know? Ah, uh, okay, okay. If that makes sense. 
Yeah, I get it, I get it. Big main entrance door here. Emergency escape door here. And here. Warehouse entrance one. Warehouse entrance two. Warehouse entrance three. Another emergency escape door here. Door here. And then big shipping doors here. And here. And above everything is a catwalk with, uh, you know, like, so you're able to get above the warehouse area and walk around above it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So that's sort of, like, the general area that you've been staking out to try and, like, breaking it up. With, um, hang on. I'll mark windows with blue squares. There's a window like this here. A window over here. A window over here, windows here, and here, and then skylights here, and here. With like, you know, uh, no, not red, not red, because the cola company uses blue. I'll use, I'll use purple to mark the trucks, you know. You know that today, they're, they've got a big shipping, uh, shipment of stuff coming in. On one end, they're shipping out cola. Like, the, the actual bottling plant is a building, like, off over here, you know? But mm. where they, they actually do their criminal stuff is the warehouse next to the bottling plant. Okay. You know that the Kingpin's office is... Boop, 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 hold on. This one here. But you suspect that a lot of his actually incriminating stuff is kept in this office here. You know? Mm. So if you want to go after the Kingpin, he's probably going to be either in here or on the floor. But well, if you want to steal a bunch of his intel and incriminating information, it'll be in here, in the room with the circle. Got you, got you. Um, and so... With that, that's sort of the intel your, car your hero has gained. That, uh, God, what's your name again? Ace. Ace. Ace D'Angelo. Mm hmm Yeah, that's sort of the intel you've gathered. Okay. Okay, okay. I just realized I can't have, uh, due, due to the way I do the hot bar, I can't have the hot bar and the art program up at the same... See, here's a secret. That's the hot bar. I just... Hang on. Have a second capture of the map. Oops. Of the map that's like... Hang on. That's like that. <laughs> so that's how that's how I do the hot, the hot bar. Or the, the, the UI bar for combat and skill checks. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Very professional. Um... So that's like the the situation that you've gathered for the the crime bosses you've been listening in on and trying to like prep to go after as the fir as your first mark on Discordant City. You know. Got you. Got you. So, with that knowledge, if you want to screenshot this map real fast, feel free. Oh yeah, uh, I was gonna ask for a, a thing at some point, so I can like just more reference thing. Oh okay, I'll I'll send you a screenshot myself. All right. So, um, here I'll send one to you, and if you if people uh, the are in the Discord, look into the Hero Infinite chat. I'm posting a copy of the map right there. Yeah. Also, at some point, the uh, this Hero Infinite. This is oops. This is actually the return of an old campaign, like that me and my friends did in private. Ah, uh, and one of my friends designed a logo back in the day. I gotta ask them if it's okay for me to use that old logo as an, uh, as a emote on the Discord server. If so, I will definitely add that has a new emote soon enough. Anyway. Um. Yeah, now that we've got all, got the layout out of the way. What does your character do in preparation for what for their plan to take down these criminals? When is it? Is it like at midnight? They are uh, going to um, pull off the stuff. 
I'm going to say it's sometime around midday, but heart of action hero points, you can make use of um your hero points to ch change the scene. And you can, I'll say that, like, changing time of day in this case will cost you four hero points if you want to change what time of day it is. Ooh. It's can like, it's like, it it's... later, it's, it's sort of midday, but a little bit after midday, you know what I mean? Getting closer to the end of the day, but sun is still out. Hmm. But if you want, you can adjust the time frame of the meeting using the uh, change of the scene ability of hero points. Then may I do that? Yes. What time of day would you like it to be? That'll be f that costs you four hero points to do. Uh, around. I want to say nine a.m. Around no so early in the morning they're like, getting like delivered. Like early, yeah. Like All right. So yeah, early in the morning they're prepping to ship out a bunch of polar cola, but also are secretly receiving a bunch of smuggled in goods like. We're, like, they b generally work smuggling whatever anybody else asks for, so it can be, like, uh, um, <laughs> this is reminding me of playing with cheats in Minecraft, changing time of day. Yeah, yeah he I just, hate it when it turns nighttime, I mean. Uh, D'Angelo just opened the console command and typed in time set six, uh, 1600. <laughs> Slash game, game mode creative. Uh, you can enter a game mode creative for 20,000 hero points, if you'd like, uh, and instantly win. Uh, I'm gonna start saving up, then. <laughs> but the, um... Yeah, it's about, or, like, midday, and, like, they, they basically smuggle things for other criminal groups, so, like... They're like the trade. Yeah, the they have guns, world. they have narcotics, they have maybe even some, like endangered animals pelts for some rich asshole who asked for it. You know? Mm. Got you, got you. Like, those are the sort of things that they have in today. And that's why you think today might be the best day to go, because, like, there'll be lots of evidence for you to show off to police. Exactly. That's what he's gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's around 9am. What's your plan? Uh... Well, I would first of all go to a store and get a little little tape recorder with like some of mm -hmm. the money still kept as like general, you know, usage type things. You know, yeah, which I'm going to give you a go like ahead of you generally have free pocket money and for anything that's now unreasonable because right. of like the way your hero's lifestyle is. All right. Got you. Yeah. So, uh, you get, like, a disposable camera. What what else would you have gotten in your prep time? Uh, a little cam recorder. I mean, like, a what's it called? Uh, voice recorder. Like All right. One of small pocket one. Voice like recording device, uh, uh, camera for taking pictures. Hmm. The, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Uh, he would get... What else would he get? Because it's important to clarify this now, because if you want additional things beyond what we t discuss now, I'll charge you hero points for them after the fact. Alright, alright. Hmm. He'd get some marbles. Like a little thing of marbles. Alright. And... Hmm. How much would a taser cost? I'd say a taser is reasonably within, like, the... Within your line of expense, just about. Alright. No, then like, a, a, a simple close-range taser. Like, like not like one yeah. of the ones that shoots five feet away, no. but, like, right next to you, taser. Yeah. You can afford one of those. So, taser, marbles, camera, record, audio recorder... Let me put this down in my notes. I love when, when I talk to some of the others about your character, one of them was like, um, oh, so he's like Lupin the First, but bet more badass. <laughs> I don't know that reference. Uh, he's basically like, I've never actually seen the show, but if I know it correctly, he's just, uh, 
It's like a heist anime about a heister who robs criminals. Oh. I think. I, I could be totally wrong. That's just, like, from my, like, third-hand understanding of what Lupin the First is. That's so cool. What? Yeah. <laughs> Lupin the First. Something I'm uh, excited about, well, while you're th thinking about what you're going to get next, I'm just going to mention this. Another player is really, like, dedicated, and two things they're doing is, one, they're looking up public domain music that I should be able to play that fits their character. And mm, that's cool. They're also trying to rig up a VTuber model of their hero that they can use during what? stream. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, that's actually so cool. Wait, hold on. Yeah, one of the one of the players wants to try and rig up a VTuber model. They haven't guaranteed that they can, but they say they hope they can. That's so cool. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, he would just <laughs> Jeez. Thinking about that. He would just get those four things. Alright. So, marbles, taser, camera, audio recorder. Yep, let me put that down. Alright. So, now what is your plan of approach? Which, real quick, I'm just gonna bring up for people to see one more time. Again, this is the map of the area. If anybody wants to have that on the side while they're watching things, you can go ahead and take a picture of it. The VTuber fandom is coming. God. But yeah, so um what do you uh what how do you plan on approaching things? Hmm. Do I know how to access to the catwalk? Uh yes, it is accessed via staircases within the warehouse area, you know what I mean? And they just like go up there. It's like yeah, they turn. they run along the the wall the wall next to the hallway. There's like a catwalk parallel to all that. You know what I mean? Okay. With a staircase up on the far right of it and the the uh, upper left of it. All right. All right. All right. And it views the shipping, right? The yeah, it overlooks the warehouse where the trucks are parked. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, which, uh, a thing worth mentioning, it, uh, just so you know, uh, in the rules of Hero Infinite, rather than specific grid-based combat, it's zone movement, right? Mm. Uh, so each, uh, hang on, let me bring up the map again. Oops, oops, that's not the map yet. Hold on, hold on. Eh. This is the map. I'm going to go ahead and quickly use orange boxes to draw, like, how big a zone is. So, changing zones costs a minor action. You know what I mean? Moving from one zone yeah. to the next. Yeah. So every orange square is a zone. Gotcha. Yeah. So sort of like... Little box is like a a minor. A uh, yeah, like okay. you can move around within the box without spending any actions, but to move from one uh, out of one box and into another costs a minor action on your turn. Okay, gotcha. Basically, gotcha. every room is a zone, but like, yeah, that's what I'm saying in chat. But like, uh, certain areas are gonna be more than one, or rooms are more than one zone if the room's big enough. Okay. So, that's the zones of the map, right there. If you want, do you want me to send you a screenshot of it with the zones, sh uh, like, draw traced out? Yeah, if you... Just be so generous. And be so kind and caring. So, moving from one zone to the next will cost a minor action on your... Once, tur if turn-based stuff initiates. Which, right. probably the moment you arrive will enter a sort of pseudo-turn-based mode. Do you know that... Mm. There's obviously going to be, like, from your intel and your observation, you know that the main entrance room is going to have an, a couple of guards in it. The warehouse is going to have a bunch of guys moving around that you may be able to sneak around. The areas behind mm. the building where the the shutters are, 
like the, the where the trucks drive out towards the docks, there's going to be a number of guards walking around there, but also a number of like crates laid out very like Metal Gear Solid stealth game st- fashion. You know what I mean? Got so you. like you you could easily like well not easy you could do stealth checks to try and maneuver through there. Uh, but I'm not going to draw specific maps or, like, trace out exact vil- villain maps or villain walking paths because that would waste time. Yeah. And yeah. there's likely going to be some guards walking around the halls. And, of course, the big boss, from your expectation, is either going to be in his office or the warehouse, but you're not sur- sure which. Uh, mm. Mr. Tobias Howards himself. And then his assistant is likely going to be in their office in the other room. Where the records are kept. It, either that or, you know, off in the, the bathroom. They're either going to be in their room or in the bathroom. One of the two. Alright. Okay. But, like, the left of the building, the right of the building, and in front of the building is generally going to be empty unless the guards are drawn toward there. Okay. I got you. Oh, and I guess... A few other, I, there will probably be a few other areas without windows, like this pro I mean, with windows that I didn't mark. Uh, from your observation at your, uh, hotel, I'm gonna say that there's a, you can see some crates are stacked on the right side of the building, where you could in theory use them to get up to a, uh, a window straight to the catwalk from the outside of the building. Mm. Alright. And, um... Additionally, there's some th- narrow windows in the locker rooms that your svelte figure could just about fit through. So there's two other entry areas you could try and sneak into the building from. Alright. Okay, okay. Basically, it's like you're playing Dishonored. <laughs> <laughs> good game, good game. Give it that. I've been playing, th- by the way, plug, 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 on my YouTube channel, I've been playing through Dishonored. Plug, plug, go watch it. Plug, plug, plug. Please, everyone go watch it right now, please. <laughs> I need the clicks and views, please. Yay. God, actually, the one-year anniversary of my channel's coming up. Actually, by the time... Actually, oh my god, you know what? The YouTube VOD of this is gonna go up on the one-year anniversary of the channel. That's so, sort of cool. Yeah, I just realized that looking at my schedule. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to have a video up on that same on the same day this goes up, addressing the fact that I've been doing this for one year. So, go and check that out after the fact, huh? A happy one year, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, we've been going for 47 minutes. <laughs> these yes. these sessions are going to go a very long time with a mix of actual important stuff and just dumb milling about, but that's okay because it's fun. I feel like more of it's going to be dumb to think about. Definitely depends There's... on the players. Oh yeah, for sure. Most of this has just been me describing the scene to you. Well, and like I think a solid 15 minutes of you reading your backstory. Hey, backstory's good though. Yeah, very good. I I love the ca- I love that your hero, the first hero of our superhero setting is just a normal dude with no superpowers. He's normal. He's Cause... literally just a normal man who just does stuff. Low-key, the reasoning is you were the first player to, like, get back to me that uh, about all of the character sheet stuff being okay. So I was like, ah, I have the next few days off, because, fun fact, I have COVID right now. <laughs> oh, oh. It, it's just Omicron variant, I'm not doing too bad. Oh. It basi- okay. It's basically just a really, Jeez. like, not even a really bad cold, it's just a cold. Dude, everyone, everyone's getting COVID now. Yeah. Like, everyone. Jeez. Yeah. So um, I wish I could, I wish I couldn't get COVID. That'd be cool. You be can part of the cool, be part of the games. Uh, you can go ahead and afford. Uh, what is your plan of action now? Uh, hmm. He would go to uh that little side door to the right, like at the to the far right in the the side door in the hall or the side door into the yeah, warehouse. Yeah, the, the hall one. The hall one. All and right. He would just. Try and open it, see if it's open at first. Okay, so yeah, it's it's 9 a.m., you, le- you leave your hotel room having formed your plan of break-in. You mm. make your way across the street, you know, just like, nice and casually and calmly, and approach the warehouse. 
a lot, on the f right side of the building, the brick wall is painted with an old 1940s mural of the old version of the Polar Cola logo. From back before, they changed the formula. Oh, Much I can't like, wait to take this place down. Back when they used real cane sugar. You yeah. approach the, the door, and it's... Uh, very clearly a fire escape door, but the building being old and shitty, it's, you know, like, modern buildings when they do a fire escape door, the outside is just perfectly smooth with no handle. Yeah. But because this is an older building, it's, there's clearly a handle there, and you walk over, give it a little test, and opens no problem, and you listen for moments, and no a siren or alarm has gone off from opening the door. Uh, looking down the hall, you can see that... Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a luck check to see if there's a guard in there right now. I'm going mm. to... Basically, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do... Uh... A skill... Uh, a skill check against nothing. Uh, you're rolling five dice... dice or good luck is five dice, bad luck is five dice, and whichever side gets more successes is whether or not you pass the luck check. You know what I mean? Gotcha. It's basically a skill check for luck. Mm. Okay. The skill, the luck check came out as a draw, so what I'm gonna say is you notice one guard standing in the hall who ha is, like, he's looking through the door. Hang on. I'm gonna bring up the map again. He's looking through this door right now and not, like, sort of, like, with his back to you, with you standing over here. Hang on. I'm actually gonna do a uh, layer... New layer. Right now, there's a guard standing. Ooh, hang on. Standing right here, looking in. Come on. No. Looking in this general direction, and you are standing right, right here. You know? Got you. So he, he's... Like, he's, like, leaning in the door frame, holding it open, just, like, watching the others work, essentially. Hmm. So... Okay. Um, what is your plan of action? Oh, he said you, it. We're, gonna, we're officially going to enter a turn-based mode, where... On your turn, you can do actions, and on an enemy turn, guards will move around, potentially. Uh, but that being said, unless you're standing in a blatantly obvious position, a guard isn't going to see you unless you're standing in line of sight for, uh, at the st at, like, for the duration of two turns, meaning at the end of one of their turns and the start of their next turn, so you'll always have a chance to get out of sight. Okay. Uh, okay. And you have your minor and your major action available to you currently. So. So, he, so he's standing there and he's looking inside. Yeah. And you're in this zone and he's officially in this zone. Okay. Well. Yeah. I'd, as I'm walking inside, I see this guy. Yeah. And. Very slight. Footsteps are heard as I'm walking straight behind him. Yeah, he's and... gonna walk very casually and carefully. Mm -hmm. And what? Where? If he notices me. He notices me. I'm gonna like try and make it not so obvious that I'm like hugging the wall. Yeah. Try and just move like... chalantly as if you belong here. Exactly. Okay. Since the, he's not expecting it there to be anybody here who's not supposed to be, and he's not directly seeing you. He's going to most likely assume that it's just a person, like a, a fellow crime crime dude, but maybe I'm not. I'm basically going to do a, um, I'm going to do a, uh, a stealth check, essentially, which do you get a bonus to those from one of your sa uh, uh, abilities? Yes, I get plus two. Plus two? All right. So I'm doing your roll, dice roll and his dice roll. Give me a moment. Ooh. Well, he rolled terribly, and you rolled fucking amazing. Oh my god, hang on. You keep rolling bursting successes? Okay. 
So you walk in through the fire escape, uh, or, or through the fire escape, and just casually waltz by, and he, like, barely even, like, he barely even acknowledges that you're there. He actually, like, while still looking in the warehouse, just gives, like, a nonchalant nod in your direction of acknowledgement, but he doesn't even look at you and doesn't even realize you're a guy that doesn't belong here. I give a... And like a little click of the click of the tongue as I'm walking. All in all, I'm gonna say it's a minor action to walk across this part of the halls. So you still have your major action. Are you gonna keep walking? I'm gonna keep walking and find a uh, what's it called? One of the stairwells that lead up that try and uh, try and get up to the catwalk. The catwalk area. So the stairwells to the catwalk are located. Hang on. I'll put a little green box over the two spots. There'd be a stairwell sort of over here, and a stairwell sort of over he over. Or hang on, actually, I'll draw the entirety of the catwalk. So the mm. catwalk runs along like this, with a stairwell here and a stairwell here. That being said, if you want to make another possible entryway to the catwalk, you could, in theory, using hero points to edit the scene. Oh no! So. Oh no no. Yeah, where where is it that you're trying to get to as a catwalk then? He's trying to get to the one near the the hangar, like the little. The, the uh, one up top. Yeah, the one up top. So you're loop. You're going to try and loop around the halls, basically. Mm -hmm. He's doing a big old loop. So, yeah, you walk down the hall and you sort of like. So, you minor action to transition zones. Major action to transition zones. You're sort of somewhere vaguely in this hall as the enemy's turns begin. And mm. during the enemy's turns, this guy walks into the warehouse and you just hear movement about in the warehouse and nothing of particular note happens during your turn. Or during their mm. turn. So now we enter your next turn. And I assume you walk up to here so you can enter the warehouse through this door. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to walk around through the outside? He would peek through the door and see if there's anyone nearby first. Alright, walking by, the... I'm gonna say peeking through the door is a free action. Alright. Um, and like, as you peek through, you can see that this tr truck over here is the one that they're like unloading all of their criminal shit from. So like, there's a couple of guys over at this. There's another guard standing... Standing guard looking... Out here, like, but no one's looking in your like. This is sort of what you're able to make out in terms of guards, and you can hear the sound of somebody being like, "All right, careful with those box. Hey, 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 that thing was expensive. Don't drop that." And then like a box uh, falling in a crash, and like, "Are you an idiot?" I look in through the door, and what are they trying to put in there? The little truck. So, this truck they're unloading things from, and you can see it's like. Boxes marked with, like, U.S. military symbols and other boxes, like, that are unstamped and are, like, crates. You hear, like, what well, almost sounds like a tiger roar come from one of the boxes that they're pulling out. Like, it's just vi very clearly various illegal goods in boxes. But they're in boxes, so if you were to take a picture, people would just be like, so what? It's, it's boxes on a truck. Hmm. Hmm. I would, I would go inside and try and walk to the cat the catwalk. All right. So There's... it was a for your you have the ma minor and the major action. So the first action you spend transitions you to this segment of hall and the second action transitions you into this room where moving moving around in this zone here is a free action essentially. So do you try and make your way to the catwalk by walking up past this guard? Uh, by the way, this garage door is open, and you can see, like, a couple more guards strolling around out here. I'm not going to bother putting markers for them. Okay. So, how do you plan to try and go toward the catwalk? Hmm. Uh, are you going to try and, like, maintain a low profile and stay stealthy as well, is an important question. As soon as he walks in, he starts to take a little more of a... Stealthy like, approach. He's, he's staying. He's staying low to the ground. But he's still like yeah. trying hit, to hit the crouch button to increase stealth in video game. Yeah, you do that exactly. movement. 
Like the, the squat away. down with your arms out a little bit, and like walking around, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Leaning yeah. against anything that you get close to. He'd be leaning against a truck, even though there's a bunch of guards outside, and they're yeah. looking in. Well, almost all the guards aren't looking in the building, but are looking out around the building, because they're not expecting somebody to already be inside that's not supposed to be there. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I had very stealthily keeping myself low to the ground and, like, looks like I'm about to sprint off. But he's still, like, walking very slow-like. Yeah. And he's trying to... And do you, do you go up around the front of the truck or down around the back? Okay. Or something else, if you can think of it. How, how, low, how high is the truck elevated off the ground? Uh, high enough that you could crawl under it. He, craw he crawls under the truck. All right. And so, from where you are to get on the catwalk, you'll have to wait till your next turn, sadly. Oh, no, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, and, but from getting here, you can see that there's just... I'm not even going to bother rotate. I'm just going to put red circles for these ones. All over mm. the shop, there's, like, a bunch of just, boom, dudes all... Ooh. Hang on, I'm actually going to... Roughly match your size. There's just, like, indistinct large m number of goons wandering around the area. You know. But there's also, all over this area, just a bunch of fucking... Crates and boxes just, like, you know, around that you could easily stealth feel through. I, again, I'm not doing a hyper-detailed map because... Part of action, you can use your points to easily edit and tweak a scene. Yeah. Uh, like, we we operate more on a, like, rather than a hard-defined scenes, vaguely defined scenes to allow for scene flexibility. Like, a bunch of boxes that you could, in theory, like, stealth around through to get towards the catwalk. And, uh... Looking around, you can notice that the big bad boss, which I'll, I'll color, color him blue, is sort of amongst his uh, goons in here. You know, the is there. Tobi Tobias Howard's. Mm. Okay. So he's, he's like um. there directing them to move boxes. Uh, and on the enemy's turn pass with them just moving more boxes and not noticing you. Because uh, you're, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you did the smart thing and stayed underneath the truck to remain hidden. Imagine he notices this, comes out of the truck in hiding. He's like, "Got your ass on tape." So yeah. They all look at him. Wait, are you saying you're actually gonna do that? No, just okay. imagine the. Yeah. Ah, we well, got your ass on lead. Pa 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 pa. Got your ass. It's, it's riddled with bullets. Mm hmm. The hell is that guy? Video game game over cut scene for when you fail the mandatory stealth scene. I'd load I'd load my death save. <laughs> but um so as we enter return you can you have minor action and major action again. What do you do? He pulls out his voice recorder. He pulls, he pulls out his voice recorder and it starts to, it. Like try just so listening can, to sorry, go ahead. To to, to try and uh Catch him in a lie, and he yeah. pulls out his camera and turns or, off the flash. It starts like snapping pictures as they're moving things around. Mm. Yeah, and, you know he's like and telling then, them like you know careful with that endangered bird. Hey, don't drop those grenades. Incriminating shit and super incriminating shit. Blah blah. You hear this? This is a fucking ice. This is a Coca Cola polar polar cola. Po polar Back cola. Reads. Spelt with yeah, a K, like, like chat said. It's cola spelt with a, a K. Have you ever had polar, Moxie? Polar, polar. What? Moxie? The soda Moxie. That's a... Isn't that like a, a drug? Uh, no, it's... Moxie? It's, it's a, a soda that tastes like cough syrup in a good way. It's a, it it's a type of sarsaparilla. It, in a good way? Yeah, it's the only way I can think to describe the flavor, is that it tastes like co cough syrup, but a g in a good way. In a good way? 
a lot of people don't like Moxie. I like Moxie. It's like an East Coast soda, I think, primarily. I think it's like primarily like East Coast and Great Lakes area is where you find it. Um. Oh, that sounds like a... Jeez. That like it it basically the the polar cola basically tastes like if you mixed a moxie with a Pepsi. That's what it tastes like. Uh huh. Um. Jeez. See, oh, my drink's empty. Oh, <laughs> um, get you a little gamer drink. A gamer drink. But yeah, so. You're, you're, like, snapping pictures, recording audio as he says incriminating shit, and you're just like, I'm in the, I'm in the Discord and City Polar Cola soda distribution warehouse, address 123 like, fuck you street. Uh, yeah, he's, like, just listing yeah. basic shit that he's seeing, he's, like, taking pictures and stuff, and he would stay there for a good three, five minutes. Alright, so yes, Sit there until you have a substantial amount of clear fucking evidence on these dudes. That they're fucking doing this shit, yeah. Yeah. And then, after that, he'd very awkwardly try and reposition himself, so he's facing the opposite side. So he's no longer taking a picture. So you're he's like... trying to go back through the door. Alright. And, you know, again, you maneuvered so carefully and quietly that none of them even notice you. You don't even... I'm not even gonna make you do a stealth check here. Because you moved through smart. So you pop oh. back into this area. Um, hmm. And where are you going to go from sense. here? I pull out my marbles. Yeah. And just... I, I'd go to the door right in front of me. Into this narrow I, hall and scatter the marbles here? And like in front of the door, but it's like not so yeah. where it's like oh, blocking man. the door. Slipping on marbles and falling like back first on them, that would that fucking hurts. yeah, that would hurt so fucking bad. I experienced that. Got oh. a big got a big swelling in the back of my head. Yeah, those would create like weeks. really bad fucking bruises. Yeah. Oh god. That's it's a way to go. So you like you spill the marbles on the floor in this narrow hallway and then where are you gonna go? Yeah, and I'd knock on the door to my left, where it is the... Uh, this office down here? Room. Yeah. Hmm. Where he keeps all of his incriminating yeah. evidence. And you hear an exasperated uh, voice be like, yes? Uh, can I come in for a sec? Yeah, come come in, come in. And right, as you walk in, there's just a man in sort of a mauve-colored suit. He's, like, balding. He looks stressed. He's got, like, thin-framed glasses sitting, like, far off on the tip of his nose as he's sitting there, uh, like, doing... Uh, do Basically doing tax paper work, it looks like. And he looks up and he's like, Who are you? I don't recognize you. Oh, uh, I'm one of the guys who are living the stuff, and the big boss man wanted me to, uh, come check in on you, and he wants you to talk to him for a sec. Okay, I'm gonna make that. I'm going to have you do a like sort of charm check at disadvantage, meaning one of your successes will be destroyed. But uh, you get a bonus to this field, don't you? Due to your light of fox ability. Yeah, it'd be a plus one then. Well, it's plus. It'd, it's it's plus two, and then after the roll, I remove one success. That's how disadvantage works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you still get the normal plus two, but then your success rate is decreased. Got you, got you, got you. Uh, are you going to spend any points on the roll? Uh, can I gain advantage die? Uh, yes, gain an advantage die for one point. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah, that's it. Hang on. Let me create... Da -dum. Sorry, I'm just eh, trying to juggle 30 windows being open on my computer at once. I know that feeling. The feeling of being a DM when you have to have a million windows open to get everything you need up. Oh, dude, I hate that. Oh, dude, that's so that's so annoying when it's like, I wish I just had like 15 monitors around so I can see all oh, of my notes and shit. I do have two monitors, which is nice, and I want to get a third eventually. I have, I also have two monitors, but still like... Um, And you're only going to buy, limiting. you're only going to buy one advantage die? Yes, just one. Okay. Um, so in the end, he has three more successes than you, your opponent. Ooh. Okay. Uh, which means 
he's not going to believe your lie unless you want to try and spend more hero points to change that. What what happens when he realizes he, I lied? Uh, so yeah, you like feel, feed him the spiel of like, oh, you know, the, the boss sent me. He's like, um, he like, he like furrows his brow for a moment. He's like, um, is that so? And he starts to delicately reach underneath his desk. I pull out my taser and go for a throat. Uh. <laughs> You, you pull out your taser and go straight for his throat? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's... Hang on. I'm going to officially declare a combat then. So let me... Close this. Open the hotbar. Go toward... This. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm not going to quickly explain how this works. Combat is going to work in a pseudo tug-of-war fashion rather than a health bar. Whenever you get a significant success, hang on, the bar is going to move more in your favor. When the enemies get a significant success, it'll move more in their favor. And you win when the entire bar is your color. Now, since you are just a mortal man facing a mortal man, the ho uh, you'll notice that I've turned the sides of the bar gray. That is, I've basically decreased the size of the combat bar because this isn't a super fight. This is normal humans fighting normal humans. So with other groups of players, this bar might be larger during combat situations. Mm. Uh, Two frail men start fighting each other. Yeah. Uh, so, he's trying to pull out his gun, and you're running at him with the taser. Oh. Combat officially, yeah, <laughs> combat officially begins, heroes go first. So, there's a gun, what the hell? I'm gonna, you're going to try and attack, and he's gonna try and counterattack, which means he's doing a normal defense roll at a disadvantage. Hmm. Uh, do you- are you spending any hero points on your attack roll? Uh... Can I gain two advantage? Uh, yes, I'll roll two, two advantage, advantage dice. dice. Alright. Done. So that's two hero points, of course. Okay! Yes. Holy shit! Uh, so... Okay. You die. Here's the way that this would normally work, right? If you if you got like let's say hypothetically that he rolled two successes and you rolled three, that means you mm -hmm. rolled higher than him, and I would do this: boom, boom, move the fight one point in your favor. But then there's okay. critical successes. Let's say he yes. got two successes and you got four. You got double the number of successes as him. That means it's a critical success, and you would advance two instead of one. Uh huh. Uh, then similarly, let's say hypothetically, he got one success, and you got three successes. You got three times what he did, which means you would have gotten one, two, three up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that all adds up. That all makes <sighs> sense. Yeah. He rolled negative one success, and you rolled positive Ooh. five. Ooh. So you run up, and... Like, he starts to sta reach under the desk, you sprint across the room, tase him in the neck, and he's just down, instantly. Instant victory. Oof. I kiss my taser. Give my taser a quick smooch. <laughs> kiss the taser, zapping your lips in the process, you're down instantly as well. Ah! Uh. Dude. Two people down on the floor with one holding a taser. What the hell happened in here? Oh, Did somebody geez. defecate? Did someone... Did they have IBS? What? <laughs> what happened? But yeah, so you fucking tase the guy in the neck, immediately knocking him out cold. That went oh. smoothly. Ah, sorry, man. So he <laughs> says that says that to himself. Yeah. And... He starts rummaging through all the stuff, and he's looking for any sort of more incriminating evidence and than he already has. You basically find, like, 
uh, clearly, ed like, before and after edited tax reports and before and after edited, like, shipment logs. Just, like, stuff that, like, if you put them side by side is deeply incriminating. Mm, he's, like, talking to the voice recorder. You see this? This is where your money's going to. Mm, and All of still... this just oh, deplorable, deplorable stuff, really. Yeah, taking pic. Are you gonna take the files with you, or are you gonna take pictures of the files? He'd try and like stuff the most incriminating of the files, but he'd still like take pictures of like the, the like everything. Yeah, he he'd be doing both. Yeah, so you got even more incriminating information. This has gone fucking mm -hmm. smoothly. What do you do I now? I grab his gun. I like he's not trying to like with his little uh, fingertips. He uh, unloads the clip and gets rid of the last bullet in the chamber, so it's like empty now. Yeah, and put it back. And or he he tosses the. The, the bullet and the gun. I mean, he tosses the the case and the bullet off to the side, and he, like, tosses the gun somewhere else. Yeah. It's like, like, just... Oh, man. <laughs> then... What if you actually also emptied the clip onto the floor so it was just all the bullets were scattered on the ground? Ooh. Make it even harder for him to put his gun back together? Ooh. Can I do that? Yeah, I'll say you can do that. <laughs> he scatters the bullets across the world. Now he has to find them. <laughs> Collect uh, fucking goes on a Legend of Zelda journey to get back doing, his bullets so he can ball. shoot you he's all twelve a, times. He's doing a Dragon Ball moment where he scatters all the bullets across the world. Now he has to find them. Throws them in the air and they all just like glow and they all, fire off they in different directions. Start flying. Whoever fine. collects all twelve bullets. Can kill 12 men. A basic gun. <laughs> you just God. have the bullets. You don't have a gun. Yeah. <laughs> you also have to get the... The gun and the, the clip also go flying off. Oh, you have to... F I have my gun the, radar. But the, gun's, but the gun's disassembled, so you have to find all the pieces to, like, oh. reassemble the gun. Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah, from there, what do you do next? Uh, I, I look at the man. And check for a pulse. Oh, he's still if alive. One, Co uh, comic book type logic. You're not gonna kill a dude. Not yet. He's making sure. Yeah. He like, looks old. He's balding. He just hit him with a taser in the neck. Yeah, he's alive. At worst, yeah, he'll but, have some some slight heart pain for the next couple days. At worst. Like, I, I put his arms together, and it's like a. It's crossing, it's like touching his shoulders. Mm -hmm. like, you know, rest, rest easy, man. Yeah. And he, is he wearing glasses? Yes. I take them and I just... I very, very comfortably put them in the middle of his desk so it's facing towards him. Yeah, so his glasses don't break in his sleep. That's nice. Yeah. You know, get a you hero know. point for taking the time to pose him comfortably. He knows how expensive glasses are. Mm -hmm. uh. Alright, so what's your next plan of action? Looks upon the room. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And then he starts to, like, just scatter all the, like, the papers, the files. He's, like, just scattering them. Well, like, like quite as he can. Scattering them on the floor or just, like, disorganizing yeah. the files? Yeah, he's like just throwing them across the room. It's like you know, just <laughs> just a making a mess of the thing. Yeah. All right. It'll be harder. It'll be harder for them to like gather all their evidence when it's like all scattered across the floor and stuff. Yeah. Know? All right. And then. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Well, what's your plan throwing... after that? Just. Well, I got everything, but. Hmm. He he goes in the other door that leads to the the big boss's big office, boss room. and he's like just out of curiosity. He goes in there and like pokes around a little. 
And he peeks his head to see if anyone's inside. Uh, the room is empty because the big boss is off on the main floor directing his leader, or his, uh, his, his goons. Mm. And, you know, looking around the office is mostly just, like, a chill area where he can, like, you know, give that you come to me on the night of my daughter's wedding kind of office. Mm. Uh, but one thing that would garner your attention as you poke around is if you open one of the cabinets, you find there's a safe sitting there. Quick, quick whistle, like a very, like the, the, very soft whistle. Yeah, the. Like, do you, when you I see can't something whistle. nice. Yeah, the, the the ooh, nice like fit, nice thing, long drawn out whistle sound. I can't whistle because I have a noise suppression on. But just imagine him whistling, guys. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's like a slide whistle. Yeah. So like, you're sort of in the corner of the room like that, standing by a safe that sits in in a cupboard right here. I assume you're gonna try and open the safe, right? How many how many like uh numbers uh can it be combined? Like uh, it's three, like the five. the classic like turning three three combo safe situation. Ah, uh, okay. But given your criminal knowledge ability, whatever it's called, what's that one called? It is called Street Smart. Yeah, your Street Smart one. I'm going to say that you are good at safe cracking. You you have the safe cracking skill. Um, mm. And opening this safe, though, would be a level four challenge. Do you want to try and open it? Yeah. I want to I want to give this a shot. All right. Let's try it. Let's try it. And in your first attempt, you roll six successes. Oh, as a headset user, I'm thankful there's no whistling. That's funny. Oh, I'm so That's one of the people. Uh, what? Oh, gotta hang on. I'm gonna try and read that now. Carcass alive. I probably read that wrong. Oh, carcass Car is alive. Carcass alive, you get a uh, hero point. Yeah. Do what you will. Hero point for carcass is alive. That's a good joke. You get, you get a hero point. Yeah. Make sure you put that down in your notes. Yeah, yeah. Put it in your campaign notes. You you can spend yeah. it later to change the scene. <laughs> oh, could you imagine? If you, like, let makes the scene harder <laughs> for us. I was, at some point, if I can set up donations, I might actually like let people donate money in order to edit scenes potentially. Maybe not. Oh, that that might be giving chat too much power. Oh, they they derailed the campaign instantly. <laughs> I might give them the ability to donate money to give hero points to players that they like. Sort of based. One dollar gets uh, gets your favorite hero one hero point. So sponsor your favorite hero today. Um, but yeah, so you fucking like sit there, like put your ear to it, and like turn it left, turn it right, turn it left again, and then a uh, satisfying clunk as you open the safe, and there it is, stacks of money. Ooh, that is a big big boy. I look around for anything to carry this with. Um, for a hero point, there's a loose duffel bag. I will gladly spend a hero point for a loose duffel bag. Are you kidding me? Ye and fill the loose duffel bag full of clearly illegal money. Yes. That was a joke? No, this is real. You get a hero point, bro. So yeah, you spend a hero point, you get the... Uh, the the duffel, bag. duffel bag, and you just start stuffing all the money in the duffel bag. Yes, Chris can just can just. And then he's coming back. And it's just from there. What do you like... plan to do next? Oh, I look around in the room to see any little bits and pieces of like if there's anything that eh. might interest him. I mean, he's like looking through the. There's some there's drawers. some booze if he's interested in that you know some nice high quality whiskeys. Um, if you open Ew. one of the drawers, there'd be a nice looking gun sitting there. But like nothing, more evidence. nothing of super interesting stuff. This guy's office is like I said, mainly just there for him to like keep up appearances and <laughs> hold meetings. Ooh. he he takes he takes some of the. He takes, like, three bottles of, like, the higher stuff. Yeah, the nice quality, quality whiskey. And... Hmm. He also grabs the gun. Alright. It's like, uh, you just... know, like... 
the classic like nine millimeter pistol that like and it's got like you know like an ivory grip nice intricate carving in the side it's just like a very clearly decorative gun that like the guy just dumped a bunch of money on so he could have a cool looking gun he, he, like, like Maria from Fallout New Vegas. He's like twirling it around and is like feeling it. It's like getting a good feel for the gun. He's like puts it in his pocket. I mean, right. he looks at it for a sec. For he's like, thank you, Tobias. And he <laughs> kisses the gun as well before he puts it in the bag. And he starts to, uh, he goes out the door. Like and out the side, the, the, the fire escape right nearby. Yeah. yeah. Just walk away. Exactly. That went really fucking smooth, I'm not gonna lie. That's his whole bit. <laughs> like, the only point where you could have royally fucked up probably would... It, if the other guy had gotten a single shot off, the whole room would have been alert, or building would have been alerted. I know. I know. And if you failed that first to... stealth check, the building would have been alerted. That's why I wanted to fucking get it, like, uh, be as uh, quick as and, possible to get to the punch. And the fact that you specifically were like, I turn off the flash. I'm going to tell you right now, if you had not said, I turn off the flash and take pictures, I would have made that camera a flash and had a room full of guys look at you. Like, Oh, could you imagine? I did say that. Yeah. Just, they all looked to him. It's like, a and group photo? Yeah, and you asking like, "Oh, is how high is the truck?" Like that, if you had tried to sneak above or below, the guards would have seen you. And that's why I was mm. sort of like, "Oh, do you go above or below?" Or if you can think of another path, like you, you played that really fucking smooth. Because uh, with that, be... you know, you slip away, and I imagine you just send all of the intel you got to like random pr a bunch of random press people in the police station, right? Exactly. Yeah, that and. Is... What he always does when he gets out. Very quickly, there is a, you know, within just a couple of days, there's a full investigation, and you're sat in your hotel room looking on, like, drinking that guy's whiskey as you watch the police raid on the warehouse happen. You know? <sighs> He's, like, twirling the gun around. Ugh. Another successful mission. Yeah, and that's a very smooth first session of Hero Infinite. I'm I'm really happy with how that got, it went. I I very much love that you went for like of all of the things you could have made for a superhero setting. You're like I'm just gonna be a normal human with no magic powers or anything. He's just a thief. He's just a thief. He, it's a very fun hero. He doesn't need powers to be strong. Yeah, man. Uh, see, so yeah, I think I think that's the full first session. Um. So, th at this point, I'm going to now directly mention the fact of, unlike a lot of things, you know, some settings of Hero Infinite, or of, uh, of Heart of Action, some Heart of Action settings will have experience. The Hero Infinite one, in this case, will not. Eventually, I'm going to have a Hero Infinite book typed up that I want to try and sell, and that will have rules for experience for players, but I'm actually going to go experience free, and you basically will gain strength as you play. So, for example... Getting that gun was basically your loot for your primary loot for this session. Mm. Um. Okay. But that being said, if you want any ca significant character growth or new abilities, you just communicate with that with me, and I'll try and make it happen organically in campaign. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, people gotcha, watching gotcha. this, uh, as far as YouTube goes, um. This is going to be a Monday series replacing Mutant Year Zero. I'm, no. I'm, I'm wrapping up Mutant Year Zero. It will probably come back again in the future when I have an open slot, but this was a series I wanted to get going, and that was the best thing to take off the, the, the schedule out of everything I had on my weekly schedule. So come back every single... Or sorry, not Monday. Tuesday. I said Monday. Every single Tuesday for more Hero Infinite. Um, in future sessions, you can look forward to more interesting heroes, such as a time-traveling cyborg. Um, that's, that's wait, yeah, wait, hold on. just giving some teasers of what to expect. A time-traveling cyborg, a mythical creature of 
uh, Vietnamese folklore. Well, actually, he's not exactly Vietnamese folk. He's it's a made up character added into Vietnamese or inspired by Vietnamese folklore. A um. A mutated human created by strange lab experiments and much more. So Man, I wish I I wish I did something else. <laughs> hey, I cool. I kind of love how grounded your hero is for a starting hero. Hey, um, he gets the job done. Yeah, we're, there's going to be some more very interesting heroes with a number of other players. Every week, you can expect a very different vibe and story from Hero Infinite. This first one is a relatively low-key stealth action adventure, but later ones might be more combat-driven, more character dialogue-driven, you know. There's going to be lots of variety week to week with this setting, and I hope it'll show off the breadth and ability of the Heart of Action system. Um... Which, again, you can find a link to the most basic version of Heart of Action in the Discord server. Uh, links all around, depending on where you're watching this. Get hyped, guys. Um, and if Get you're watching games. this on YouTube, why don't you go and watch the Unpacked series which went live today? I've been adoring that game. And, I mean, I guess I don't really have anything super similar to this. If you want me interacting with other people... You can check out Overcooked with Hero Rare Heart or me and Arm Reading Homestuck. But right now, there's not really any other tabletop RPGs going on on the channel. Uh, nor any other ones I'd feel strongly about recommending, because most of those series died in the water for one reason or another. Oh. Yeah, let's do Balloons thing, bro. That'd be hype. <laughs> balloons Tower Defense. Yeah, it's uh, hype, bro. I'm balloons fine. Tower Defense TTRPG. Balloons Tower Defense Campaign. I've been saying this for freaking years, bro. The balloons. No one, no one listens to me. They've been coming for years. They bro, won't stop. Little, mo little monkey with a dart and uses the heart of action system. Man. So just think about it, bro. Just think about it. Loki, with the flexibility of heart of action, I could probably make it happen. Like, you, you, you're you joking saying it, and my brain's immediately like, oh, you know, I probably could create, like, heart of action <laughs> classes based on all the monkey classes. <laughs> That'd be that'd be a cool one shot. Uh, cool one shot. Be, it'd be a lot of effort for a one shot though. It'd be fun. <laughs> be. Uh, I'll see all of you later. Ta -ta. All right, later, later, gamers. That's my catchphrase from now on. Bye. Expect that more from me. Later, gamers. Right, spelled G A Y. Later, gamer. Little gamers. Mers. Bro, it's literally my new catchphrase. Get ready for it, guys. Get hyped.